Hi, I'm Kate Weiss here at Kunstram Studios for Wordplay, here with Kabaka Pyramid. Yes, yes, yes. Hello, welcome. Thank you for coming. Yeah, man, thanks for having me, you know. Pleasure, man, pleasure. So the reason we've got you here is you're at the start of a huge European tour. Yes. How are you feeling about it? Good, you know, we've been preparing, you know, it's another, it's not another run. We tour typically every year, maybe every other year, so, you know. We used to it, but at the same time, there's always high anticipation to get in touch with the fans and feel the energy again, you know? Of course. You were here already this summer, weren't you? Yes, I was. Uh, we had a show in Crystal Palace with Damian Marley. And um, I did a couple other European festivals too. Nice. Yeah. Nice. So if people haven't seen you live before, mm -hmm. what can they expect? So it's live music, you know, I have like a, sometimes a four or five piece band. It's high energy, you know, a lot of lyrics. You have to definitely have to come out ready to hear some lyrics. Um, you know, but it's reggae vibes, it's conscious, it's message music, it's positive, uplifting. You know, we talk about social situations, what we see happening, you know, with the system and how it affects people. And that's kind of what Rastafari is about, always about, you know, uplifting people and, you know, pointing out what's happening in society so we can be aware, you know, and that's that's what my, the core of my music is about. But we also, like, go through different eras of, of reggae music too, yeah. you know, touch on some rhythms from the 70s and go to the 80s and then, you know, come up to modern vibes. That's brilliant. I mean, we need a lot of the consciousness right now in the UK yeah, yeah. and in the whole world. Everywhere, yeah, for sure, for sure. So that's very welcome. So uh, you said that you and Sean Paul are the hardest working tourists <laughs> in the business, that yeah. has been said. How do you find the energy and the focus yeah. to write when you're always on the road? Um. So for me, being on the road gives you, you know, context when you're writing. It gives you inspiration. Like when I'm on the road and I'm seeing other acts, I'm listening to music, I'm talking with my musicians, with my friends and, and the whole team. It's like I'm just like making mental notes of things I want to include in, in, in my other songs. Because I typically don't like write on the road unless I have like my setup with me because I like to record when I'm, you know, creating. Yeah. So I actually like write with the microphone, like you know, oh, while I'm okay. recording. So sometimes I'll do songs in like the hotel room, okay. and like ideas will come to me. But I typically don't like write stuff down on paper or, or anything like that. Okay. So it's more like you know you store up all of this energy, and then when I'm home in my home studio, and all that's when I'm recording. Okay. So do you play like guitar or anything? So when you've got your mic there, because you need like yeah. a melody for when you're... Yeah, so it's, I, I, I make beats. That's typically what I do. Okay. But like, you know, other people send me rhythms and ideas and stuff. But I play a little guitar. I don't, I'm not good enough to like play it and create a song at the same time. Yeah. So it's more like if, I, if I'm working on a beat yeah. and I need to, you know, jot down a guitar idea, I will do that and then get my guitarist to like really play it properly. Perfect. Okay. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> sure. So, speaking of making music, mm. last year uh, you did win a Grammy. Congratulations. Yes, thank, you. thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> How has that affected your career since then? Because you've had a bit of time to absorb it and for it yeah. to kind of flourish. So. Yeah, everything has been elevated. Everything from the, you know, the shows we're doing, from the places we've been. We've been to places we've never been before since then. Yeah. Since then, and um, you know, just the excitement from the people, just the the stature in the industry. You yeah. know, people just look at you with a different look in their eye. You know what I mean? It's just yeah. it's a whole different vibe. But you know, it's still still the same person, still grounded. You know, still have the same team around me. Nothing has changed regarding that. But we still, you know, just looking for new heights always. Of course. Yeah. Were there any um, downsides at all yeah. to winning? <laughs> I gotta ask. I mean, you have some. You have some people who will say, you know, stuff, and then I actually heard that um, someone actually told me that they thought I was talking about the Grammy too much, and I'm like, hmm, try winning a Grammy and yeah. see what happens. You know what I mean? But, yeah. No, but yeah, you, you, you hear things like that and then you hear people say, oh, it's because of Damian Marley and the Marleys and, you know, all of that stuff. So, but, you know, there was an overwhelming amount of positive, you know, because it was like people... 
kind of felt like I was the underdog in the lineup in the, of nominees, right. you know, and like, yeah, it's a, it's a win for people who kind of just stick to what they're doing over a long period of time and just with consistency. You know, I, I never had the, the kind of multiple number one hit singles kind that was never me. I just kind of slowly but surely, you know, kept at what we're doing with consistency and, and build a brand that way. It's true, like, it's not like it came out of nowhere. You've been around for a long time. Yeah, for sure, 100%, you know. Sorry. Some people say I'm still young. Maybe I, I look younger than I am, you know, but we've been, I've been, like, creating music for the last maybe 22 years, yeah. you know, like, in terms of when we just back, began coming out of high school. but just professionally releasing like reggae music that has been from maybe 2011 yeah and then just started to grow from there started touring 2012. i think people over here probably got to know you around or certainly be started hearing about you about 10 years ago or so yeah so. yeah exactly so it's a minute <laughs> sure i think like songs like well done in 2015 kind of helped to you know bring the awareness of our kabaka pyramid yeah perfect yeah. so with that Grammy and with your love of hip hop, mm -hmm. you must get asked this a lot. I apologize, but like, <laughs> who would you collaborate with if you could pick anyone out of hip hop? Um, Black Thought from the Roots. Mm. You know, he's he he grew into kind of being my favorite rapper. Yeah. You know, wasn't that the big? I always respected him, but like, he just seems to just elevate and just get better and better every year, and that's crazy because he's he's up there now. You know what I mean? Yeah. But but yeah, I always respect him, and um, you know. But I'm like a big Wu Tang fan. I've, I've collaborated, not like in studio in person, but I've been on songs with Raekwon and Method Man. Yeah. So you know, but like. It's a dream come true. Yeah, no, for sure, hundred percent, hundred percent. But yeah, um, Lauren Hill is also somebody that I really, yeah. you know, what I mean, like she's. She's like top ten male or female for me. Yeah. You know. Well, I'm sure. That you can make it happen. Yeah, 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 for sure. Head it here yeah, first. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> so, at the core of your music is a social conscience, and also indicated by who you would work with in hip hop. Yeah, but, yeah, you know. for sure, for sure. And uh, so, if you could change the world in one way or change people's behaviour in one way, what would you like to see more of in the world, or or less of in the world? Hmm, that's a very good question. Um, Yeah, so ultimately I feel like for, for, for humans to like continue our evolution, I think we need to realize that we are, at first we are soul and spirit beings, mm -hmm. not physical. Mm -hmm. So that means our physical differences are very minor when it comes to the reality of, of who and what we are. So if we know that, and if we know that we're spiritual beings ultimately, and we can start to see the spirit within each other, yeah. I feel like all the differences between like you know racist discrimination, all the the levels, classes of society, those things will start to dissip dissipate mentally. Yeah. You know, so that's for me. It's maybe not the most tangible thing, but I think that would lead to so many other things. Yeah, we're you know? very um visual-based society. Yeah, for sure. It's, you know, that's, we have the five senses for a reason. We, we've, been, we've evolved to operate in this physical reality, yeah. but there's so much more beyond it that we're just not aware of, but it's still there, you know? I think your music helps to remind people of that, and that's I so try, important. I try, I you know? try, yeah, big thanks. So, um, so you have said before, I thought this was really interesting, that in reggae, when people make it big, they often close the doors behind them, mm. rather than kind of putting a hand back and yeah. helping those coming up. Is that something that you would like to see change within the scene? Yeah, for sure, for sure. I think like there needs to be more unity around kind of building platforms so that there's stages that artists can climb up and there's a support system there yeah so like the artists will reach further if, if we find a way where we can do more like touring packages and and have different tiers of artists going on the road with bigger acts because that's what i see happening in like the u.s reggae scene like the american bands yeah. and stuff i just see these huge packages and then the smaller acts are going out on tour with the bigger acts and they're expanding their fan base based on that a, a lot of 
what we do in, in reggae and dance all this kind of unless you're a part of a same camp with somebody it's like a lot of man for themselves yeah. like we kind of just had to figure out our own way and just grind our way through there wasn't really many of those opportunities like to, to go on tour with other people. Yes, Damian Marley brought me on tour. Yeah. You know, thankful for that. I've toured with Anthony B. He's also one of the hardest working like, <laughs> out there for sure. He even like wasn't well the other day, and I'm saying, yo, B, you need to rest. Yeah. Like, yeah, tour too hard. You know, yeah. but but you know, so I think we need some kind of structure, some binding force that can, you know, create this platform where we can go. Because I think. Like the music needs a touring thing to be more structured. Okay. You know, I think it's it's almost like we work on promoting the music and the songs, uh -huh. and then we kind of just figure out how the touring is gonna happen after that. Okay. When it's like a lot of genres, the touring is fundamental, and it's almost like you're feeding into the touring yeah. because that feeds back to everything else. Yeah. You know, so. Well, I mean, how many times have you been like a bit? Uh, about an artist, maybe you know of them a bit, and then you go and see them live and you're blown away, and from that day forth, it, you that, are the biggest fan. That's what I'm saying, it happens, and that's that's really the platform you're going to win people over. Yeah. You know, it's like, you know, even, even Duane was saying the other day that reggae music, the, Reggae music needs to be played live to experience it. Yeah. It's not like a cell phone social media music. Yeah. You know, you can enjoy it in your headphones and stuff, but it's not the same. Like when you're hearing that bass hit your chest and you're That's seeing exactly. somebody's personality on stage and, you know, you're getting all of the, the different energies and vibrations with the band, the musicians, everything. So we need that. We need to, we need to focus more on the touring aspect and really build it out. That's 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 very true. Um, if you could take, is there any like artists mm -hmm. from back in Jamaica who you kind of are yeah. really rating that maybe people over here haven't heard of or who are a little bit smaller yeah. that you could possibly take on that tour no, in the future? For sure, there's a lot. So um, you know, Medicine, Irish Soldier, Yaksta, um, Ja Israel, Aymaru. I'm highly celestial. There's so many. I'll you be know? taking notes. <laughs> yeah, there's so many. And then you have like, you know, Naomi Cowan, you have Jazelise, you have a lot of yes. female acts coming up where doing really well. Of course you have the Leela Ikes and stuff who are, you know, people probably familiar with. Yeah. You know, and, and yeah, but there's so many acts coming up. Royal Blue, you know, Runkus. Yeah. There's so many of them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh touring, you've got Plenty of dates coming up. Yeah. So we've got in the UK alone this mm -hmm. Sunday, London, yes. Islington. Yes, looking forward to that. That's going to be great. Mm -hmm. The uh, on the fourth, Birmingham. Birmingham. That's tomorrow. Yes. That's yeah, before that's that. Tomorrow. That's yeah. tomorrow. Uh, yep. And then Bristol. Yeah, Bristol is what Thursday. Thursday. I believe. Yeah. And Falmouth as well. Yeah, Falmouth is Saturday. This Saturday coming after Birmingham. Yeah. So if you haven't got your tickets. What are you doing? Go and get your tickets. Go okay. get And if you're in Sheffield too, that's next week, Friday. I'm just got to Oh, that is it? I yeah, missed Sheffield that one. Too. No, it's all good. It's Sheffield all good. as well. Well, we're very blessed to have you here. And um, thank you so much for coming down and speaking to us. I hope your tour goes amazingly. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you. And I'm blessed.